guys, and welcome to New Paradigm. Inspiring people, inspiring interviews to inspire others. My name is Samuel Benta, and today's positive quote is, we become what we think about. That's from Earl Nightingale. Now, this individual next to me, he has managed his first Michelin star restaurant at the age of 19, working in more than 300 different restaurants in two different countries, and after eight years in the catering industry, he felt lost and without a sense of direction and purpose. He decided to give everything away that he had to start a journey of personal discovery that led him to find his true purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to Simone Vincenzi. Lovely to meet you. There. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. That hey, was hey, hey, I just, you know what, it's, it's, really, it's really interesting. Uh, Simone Vincenzi, now come on, yeah. where's that from? Uh, Italy, of course. Italy, right. Of course. Do you know right? what, I, I've, always, I've always been curious to know, like, we're in London, right? Yeah. So we have so many people from different countries coming over to London primarily. And I want to know, what brought Simone Vincenzi to the UK? What brought, that's a great story. So I was working in, a, I was manager, managing a restaurant in Italy and uh, I kind of used to be headhunted because uh, I'm not bragging too much about myself, I like that too, but I was good at being, I was good at what I was doing. I was really great. And um, I, I used to have people coming to me and say, oh, I want you to work in my restaurant. It's like, okay. Oh, wow. So this time, I had this guy and I was serving him well with was all his family around and he said, I want you to work for me. I'm like, yeah, okay. So what you're saying is everyone wanted to work with Simone Vincenzi? In the restaurant, yes. Oh, wow. So, I mean, like, was this something that you had studied in school or...? Actually, no, that came uh, from... Um, my, my, my father was an alcoholic and uh, my parents split up when I was 14. So, no money in the house. Oh wow, so that, that, that's a lot of responsibility for someone of that age. Exactly. So I know you said how you know, your father was an alcoholic. I yeah. mean, uh, obviously what I like to do with New Paradigm is I like to get deeper with people to find out where their pain comes from. Because I'm sure as you know, Simone, from your line of work is there's always a reason why people choose certain industries yeah. and why they, you know, they find their true purpose. Yeah. Right? They find their true purpose and it mainly comes from their pain. So Simone, I know you said that your father was an alcoholic. Yeah. And I understand that that was a lot of responsibility that you needed to take on at such a young age. Um, if you don't mind me asking, like, can you go a little bit deeper into like, what was the actual family environment like when your dad was an alcoholic? Um, actually, my mom kept it very safe. I need to be, and I always will be grateful for my mom because uh, she carried all the heavy weight. Mm. So on the outside, it, everything looked fine because my mom was covering everything and actually I wasn't even aware that that was happening. Wow. And I started getting a sense of it when I was uh, seven, eight years old. Yeah, do you know, uh, do you know it's so funny with, um, with children in general, they see through all the BS it was a, an interesting situation because uh, it was like I was aware of it, but because it was in my environment, uh, it was normal. Mm. So it was normal seeing my father going and, like, and sleeping in the afternoon. I didn't know that uh, it was because he was drunk at the time. Mm. And uh, now he recovered. Great job, he went to Alcoholic Anonymous, he recovered. But as I said before, my parents split up at the time and I was 14 and I was sick and tired of this situation of constant fights between the family because at the beginning I wasn't aware of it but the more I was growing up the tougher it was becoming and uh, I was sick and tired of the constant fights I was sick and tired of the, the screams and the shouts that were in the house so when actually they split up I was Thank you, God. <laughs> oh, so you actually, so you want, you actually wanted them yeah. to break up? Yeah, because it was uh, when you see that something is not working, why keep it together? Mm. And I think that's a lesson in life that I got that is helping me every day. Something is not working, mm -hmm. why keep doing it? <laughs> yeah, and you guys, you, you know, you should like. I think it's worth paying attention 
to things like that as well. I mean, you were what, you was 14 at the time, yeah. right? So you was 14 at the time, and it says here, obviously, you, you managed your first Michelin star restaurant at the age of 19. So 14 to 19, what happened during that, during that period when your, I, your parents I, I wanted to have some money. I didn't want to always go to my mom and say, mom, can you give me five euros? Mom, can you give me 10 euros? Euros, you know. Euro, we are in Euro. Italy, we are in Italy, Not right? the pounds, we're talking euros now. <laughs> talking euros in Italy. <laughs> and um, I found a job as a, as a waiter in a restaurant. And uh, I was very lucky because I loved it. The first job I've ever had, loved it with my heart. So I was actually spending more time working in a restaurant at a school. A school I was rubbish. I wasn't studying at all, but I was putting all my love, all my time, all my passion in serving other people. Mm. That's what I loved, and uh, it, it made a difference. It made a massive difference in my life because I was actually hanging on to my work and it, I was finally finding a sense of meaning because family was going wrong, school, let's not talk about school. Let's At talk least, about, I think we, <laughs> we should talk about the school now that you've just, you've just mentioned that. So, Simone, yeah. what was you like at school and why do you want to avoid talking about it? I, didn't like school at all. The only reason why I was in school and I finished school actually was because I fell in love with a with a girl. <laughs> right. right. That, see, see, love can love can bring you out of so many harsh situations. It can even make you stay in school. Exactly. It gives um, you a reason to live. It, 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 give, it, give, it gives you a reason to live. <laughs> all right. And uh, the, my my other reason to live, as I said, became my work. I was identifying myself in my work, I was getting a sense of fulfillment and I was getting results. And I loved it, everyone was praising me. Oh Simone, you're great, you're so good. And in my mind, I wanted to become better. Mm. Every single day, I was asking questions, I wanted to learn, I connected with incredible mentors and uh, like major of hotels that could help me. And I never done a professional school of waiter or catering, never. Wow. So, so what you're so what you're basically saying is this is something you've kind of just been learning as you've been going along. Exactly. And there was one key thing uh, you actually said, which was fulfillment, fulfillment and getting results. Because uh, I've said a lot to people, you know, if you're going to be doing something, make sure it's something that you love and you feel fulfilled. Otherwise, what's the point? Exactly. That, that's, that, that has been always my philosophy. If I don't like it, I don't do it. That, I was doing it in school. I didn't like it, I wasn't doing it. My poor, poor mom, <laughs> because she was like, do that, I don't like it, I'm not gonna do it. What tends to be the pattern nowadays is parents will put their children in school and they will say the classic line where, study hard, get good grades, so you can go and get a good job, right? And... Um, yeah, get a good debt. You get so many... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh, did I say that? Okay. And you, you get a good death as well. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, that is more, more, more the times that we're in now, especially with the age of the internet, those kind of old rules are starting to die down one mm -hmm. by one by one now, and everyone's starting to find creative avenues. I agree with you. Stuff, it, right now, it's been a, I, I read a study on, um, was that Fortune or uh, was that Inc., I think, and it was a study that uh, having, starting a business now is more secure than having a job. Wow. So now it's shifting completely where people were get a job, get a job, get a job. Now it's start a business, start a business, start a business. Exactly. But I guess that the old generation, probably like my parents, your parents, they still have to adapt to it. And it's the normal period of transition of the changes of time. If there's any of you out there that need hugs, let Simone know. He will be happy to just come and give you one of those. I'll give you a one cuddle. Of those, one, of those, a cuddle. <laughs> one of those big bear hugs, right? So that, that'll be a lot of business for Valentine's Day for you. Exactly. Have I just, have I just inspired you to start, <laughs> start a new start business, a new start business a, for February the 14th? Business. <laughs> so anyway, you're not free hugs. I got paid hugs. You pay me five quid, I give you a hug. Uh, I don't is know that, if no, anyone's that... going to be paying five quid for a hug, but then again, you know, it depends on who you are, right? So, Simone, one yeah. thing I'll, I, I do know that you used to play basketball, yeah. and one thing I discovered about you recently as well is you also used to be playing the didgeridoo. I don't know if you still do that. And for those of you that don't know, the didgeridoo is one of those like long kind of instruments and you blow into it, right? And it makes this very, very deep sound. So didgeridoo, I started playing the didgeridoo four years ago. And that's another story because uh, I, I was homeless 
because I one of I'll, I gave everything away. So I said when I came to London, then I worked for a couple of years in London, yeah. and uh, I decided to say, okay, no, now restaurants are not for me anymore. I'm not liking what I do. Went to this crisis of identity, and it just felt good. I said I just got to get rid of everything. Mm. So I actually shaved completely. You shaved your head bald? <laughs> shaved completely my head so, bald. So all these curls, all these curls was once not there. Right? Well, once not there. It where, once was, it was not like, there. It was there. It was, it was like this. Oh, yeah, so you had to go and touch my head. You had to go and touch my head. All <laughs> okay. right. So no, but you're saying you, you were homeless. Yeah. And you gave everything away. Now, talk to me about that. What? How, how did you become homeless? Uh, I gave uh, two reasons. One, I gave everything away. I was lost and uh, it felt... Uh, I, was a, became, uh, I became a bit of a hippie at the time. Okay. So I was going from commune to commune and live from Eco Village to Eco Village. And I love, it was a, a part of my life. I became an activist. I slept, uh, you know where there was St. Paul, the... Um, Saint, Saint Paul, uh, in what, front of St. In front of St. Paul Cathedral, there was the Occupy Movement. Oh, wow. Where a big protest, uh, that been people camping out from Saint, to St. Paul for about uh, five months. And I was there with them. So one was my change of society because I realized that the way a lot of people live wasn't working. So I went to rejecting society completely. That was reason number one. Reason number two, uh, I made, I wanted to start my business as a coach and I wasn't making enough money because I didn't know anything about business. I done my coaching studies at the time but I didn't know anything about how to start a business and I had this rejection of money. It's like, money is the root of all evil. I don't like money. See, was this, was this all still whilst you were homeless? Uh-huh. Right, so... Everything all at the same time. So It was a big mess. So that's My crazy. life was a bit of a mess. So basically, you're homeless, you're on the street, and you're thinking business ideas. Uh-huh. The average homeless person I know is probably not thinking that because they're too busy, like, sitting there, they're sad and, you know, they're begging for, like, money and stuff like that. But you're, you were actually thinking of business ideas whilst you were homeless. Yeah. Wow. Because really uh, I wanted to do something that uh, could that I loved, and uh, I found my passion in coaching and personal development that helped me massively going through my transition as from a, as a waiter to what I'm doing now. Mm. I had that rejection of money, so it was very difficult actually to start a business having the rejection of money. So that was another personal journey that I had to go through. But I was uh, listening every day to Les Brown. Uh, That's what got me out, really, and what got me to n not see myself in the situation where I was in, but to see myself as where I wanted to go. Uh, and I remember Les Brown saying this, like, you're not who you are right now. You are where you want to go. Mm. And, and th that also links to the positive quote of today, yeah. we become what we think about. Exactly. And that's a... Perfect example right there because you want to tell everyone what you're doing right now. Yeah, and uh, just to finish the story with wrapping, the, wrapping up the story of Les Brown, yep. I, I spoke on the stage with Les Brown and uh, it was an incredible experience. And I, had, I was in the backstage with him and I said, thank you. And he said, why? <laughs> no, people said, why? Uh, I, when I was homeless, uh, you were the one that uh, was keeping me focused uh, on building what I wanted to build. Without you, I wouldn't be where I am right now. So, thank you. Give him a big hug. So he it gave him pay. a bear hug. I, he didn't pay for it. He didn't he pay, pay for it. For it. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him a big hug and uh, that was my way of giving back and I could see that uh, he, he was like blushing and you see his passion and this is why he does what he do. And this is why I do what I do, because um, I'm now asking what do I do now? I have people living their purpose full time. What does it mean living your purpose full time? Well, a lot of people started coming to me and ask me, how do I find my passion? How do I find my purpose? Mm -hmm. And somehow it's something that I always did. Mm -hmm. I was always in tune with myself, with what I like, what I didn't. So a lot of people were started asking me, how do I find my purpose? And it's like, yeah. Do this, do that, do that, do that. Using my coaching skills and also a lot of personal intuition. And it worked. So more people were coming to me and then I started building a business and more the business was growing, the business was growing and we held more than 
think 10,000 people by now finding wow. their purpose and living it. Wow. In the past three years has been an incredible journey and incredibly fulfilling. 10,000 people in three years. Yeah. Wow, that is a lot of people. That is a lot of people. Simone, this, is, this has been amazing and I think people that are watching this right now, um, I mean, just by me sitting here listening to you, I think it's definitely inspiring, especially the bit where you was homeless thinking about business ideas. I mean, they would, the average homeless person would probably think no one's going to hire me. But here we've got Simone Vincenzi right here thinking, oh, business ideas. And clearly, you know, you're very successful in what it is that you do. Absolutely amazing. One thing, uh, this, is what, this is a question I'm gonna ask everyone that comes on the show. Yeah. If the human race was going to be extinct in 24 hours, and it was down to you from stopping it happening, what would you do? Having a Superman t-shirt underneath, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I would be the first one. I wasn't prepared, so I was like, <laughs> Okay, what would I do? Hmm. Yeah, this is this is all down to you. Like the whole world's waiting on Simone to do something. What would you do? Wow, that's a great question. It's a great question. <laughs> it's I'm, a glad, great I'm question. glad I picked that one. <laughs> it's a great question. It was all down to me. Uh, well, first of all, I would get, I would find a way to get everyone together. Because I personally believe that together we can achieve more than we can do by ourselves. Oh yeah, definitely. So I'm not a kind of superhero solo player. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's just me. I say, okay guys, that's what's going on. We have 24 hours. That's the problem. What can we do? Boom. And then having a, some finding something to work all together and to cooperate. Yeah, I'm guessing it would probably be something online as well. That's probably the quickest way that you're going to yeah, get. Yeah, like a viral, a viral video. It's like, okay. hey, the world is finishing in 24 hours. What can we do to save the world? Do you know, it's funny, most videos that get the most views are the ones with cats. So I'm just guessing- I'll put a cat in the background. Just, just, put, just put a cat as the thumbnail and you'll get a click automatically. It'll be exactly, fine. so we can save the world. Exactly. Uh, do you want to tell people how they can get hold of you? Uh, yes, of course. Thank you for the question. Yeah. You can find me on uh, my website, which is uh, gtex, www dot gtex, g -t -e -x, dot org, dot uk and also on Facebook, find uh, Simone Vincenzi on Facebook and I'm doing Facebook Lives every day. Yes, he is definitely doing Facebook Lives every day and you can see his information on your screen right now. All right guys, well we are coming to a close now and we will definitely be back next week. And for you guys out there watching a show like this, if you know anyone who you feel should be interviewed on New Paradigm, please contact bentatalks at gmail.com. You can see the email just below. And I wanna thank you, Simone, for coming today and just sharing your story. Thank you for having me. It's been a, <laughs> a, a great fun. It's, it's incredible. And uh, it's, if we can it's just touch one life, here we are. That's what it's about. It's just Done about it. helping others and helping them reach them and just help them take them to the next level. Gotcha. Cool. Well, <laughs> thank you, Simone, for coming in and Stay tuned for Benta's Knowledge Corner. Passion. We all have a passion for something. There are many things that we love to do. The question is, why do most of us choose to not do what we love? Is it fear? Is it what society says? Is it what your parents have said? Is it what your friends have said? It's time for us to do what we love. When we do what we love, it doesn't actually feel like work. I think it's very painful when people kind of get stuck in that kind of work mode and it's like, oh, I need to pay for this, I need to pay for that. And when we go through that mode, our dreams tend to just slowly start to dissolve. We must be in love with what we do. When we love what we do, it doesn't feel like work. Each and every one of you has been given talents. Many talents are still dormant within you. And you may be thinking, how am I going to do what I love when I've got X, Y, and Z to take care of? You have created a space in the universe just because you are here. There is room for you to do what you love. You can get paid doing what you love. Yes, it is possible. It is possible. It is possible for you to do what you love. Passion, 
Find what you're passionate about and get on with it right now.